we literally have people out circulating to see the idea of, of whether he and I should run for governor and lieutenant governor as independents, not as Democrats or Republicans, just to uh -huh. throw a huge wrench in the whole race. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Man. What's going on, my friend? How, how are things in India? It's got to be warmer than it is here. Woo! That, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. This is killer. So um, we've had a cold spell here for about three days, and I live in the southern part of the United States for anyone that's not from here. And it just, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the coldest I remember it getting in about 25 years. The, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because nobody's homes are built for this stuff. They just aren't. Yeah. So like our plumbing is against the outside walls, which in the northern towns, they would never do it all runs through the middle of a mm -hmm. basement and big, a big area underneath your house. And so, yeah, water damage everywhere, all this other stuff. But that's not the interesting thing this week. We mm -hmm. had 18, earth, 18 earthquakes in one night. Did you hear anything about it over there? Oh, oh shit. Yeah, I did. I, I mean, yeah, not, oh, wow. not, not on the news. <laughs> it's just because oh, I right. talked to so many of you idiots. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, do you know what injection wells are? Do you know anything about the oil business at all? Okay, so yesterday I heard part of um, your podcast with Kit. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Right. I did want you to talk about this. So 18 yeah. earthquakes in a single day. Right. And so these aren't enough to necessarily ruin your house. But mm -hmm. if you're slowly shaking a house all night long, you're going to have some damage. But here's where yeah. it gets weird. We don't get to hold those companies liable. It's our duty to get insurance against their malpractice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. And, and you're right. You're a businessman. And I mean, how how much did you have to pay a legislature to not hold the business people liable, but yet the folks that have nothing, literally nothing to do even with the business? So mm -hmm. four nights ago, I'm at home. It's about eight o'clock at night. And every once in a while, we'll get a crime helicopter that flies real low. You know, not like a yeah. major city like New York or Chicago or any of that where it goes on all the time. But they get real mm -hmm. close to your house and you get a little bit of a sonic boom. Mm -hmm. And that happened, but I mean, it popped like I have never heard something go. And uh, and my wife was like, what was that? And I go, shit, I think it was a helicopter. And she goes, there's no damn helicopter. <laughs> that was the earthquake. Literally, Holy it was shit. that loud. Yeah, and I've been in bad ones, like in San Francisco, literally, where I was at the airport and it was rolling across the tarmac towards me. And I'm like, I am literally <laughs> going to die. But all of the buildings were designed to absorb it. But mm -hmm. none of ours are. I mean, we're just, it's its weird. I mean, and, and you know, I'm a newcomer here. I've only been here 25 years. I don't yeah. know. Most of this started with what people would say is fracturing, which is not true. It's directional yeah. drilling and then the injection of water. And now this is disposal wells. And so if you remove, you know, 5 million barrels of oil from underneath the ground, there's a pretty big vacant space there that you can throw uh -huh. your trash, right? And so they fill it up with trash. No. But at high pressure. So it's moving all the rocks around. Yeah, it's it's crazy shit. But our state is run by oil and gas. And, you know, my family was in it. Kit's family mm -hmm. was in it deep, deeper than mine. Evidently, his grandpa was one of the pioneering people with fracking. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> Sean, right. I think behind it's, you, it's high time for those bottles that you put a rope on it by at right. night, so, like a boat. <laughs> yeah. So what you what you actually do on that is you go up about an inch and you put wooden trim, so mm -hmm. they won't shake off the walls. Yeah, these, yeah. but this didn't shake like a regular earthquake. Mm -hmm. It it was a it was a seismic shift, <laughs> and then okay. what what really is bothersome, and this is indicative of where we are in America now. You immediately have these high-level politicians going, oh, it's not the oil and gas business. And you go, how in the F would you know? There's no reports yet. There's no, But yet we can tell you within a one-mile radius where it started. Okay. You know, I, it, is, it is. And that's, I, I think I'm, and, and, you know, we've talked about it on here before. I, I am deeply disturbed at the third world nation that I am now living in, where <laughs> Where stuff like this is okay. There's a million of us live in this town that were affected by that. 
And then the, the, the big politicians come out and go, oh, no, it's not over here. It's something else. This almost sounds like the British treating the peasants, right? Where they're like, you're too uneducated right. to understand anything we're going to say. So we're just going to pacify yeah. you with whatever crap we come up with. Right. <laughs> we learned it somewhere. That is our mother country. <laughs> and it's it's not your mother country, but our country mm. was developed by them and the French. And the French are not far behind. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. And the Dutch, you know, they're 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 nearby with the finances to make you go bankrupt to borrow from them. <laughs> It's, mm-hmm. It is. Um, it's so. And what Kit and I have been talking about lately on our show is doing a combo. So we we literally have people out circulating to see the idea of, of whether he and I should run for governor and lieutenant governor as independents, not as Democrats or Republicans, just to uh-huh. throw a huge wrench in the whole race. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Man. <laughs> right. Well. I mean, you lived here. I am well enough. I am well known enough to pull 15 percent of the vote just with my name on the ballot. People going, mm-hmm. I'm familiar with that name. I don't know who he yeah. is, but I'm familiar with the name. <laughs> I, we could ruin any election and not mm-hmm. necessarily to get uh, the right person in, because when you start planning it that way, it doesn't work. But just to go in and bring a bunch of stuff up at debates and things that no one will talk about, much like I did with the jail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of point out issues that no one else is talking about type crap. Well, I so if you, you're from a major city over there. Mm-hmm. If you went to a smaller town, we assume we know what the worries are for people in small towns. We just assume, you know, yeah. God, you need to move to the city. You don't have enough money. You're on welfare or something of that sort the the government keeps trying to give away money that went to your schools all of that kind of stuff so mm-hmm. but we don't we don't know sh- we don't know anything about what they actually think which yeah. is the preachers run those towns and the preachers mm-hmm. tell everybody how to vote and so if you go in as a democrat the preacher says you're for abortion and they can't vote for you you don't oh. even get a chance but if you go in as an independent mm-hmm you don't have to take a side on any of that stuff. You go, let's just talk about real issues. I don't, I don't get yeah. to have anything to do with that. And you can and you can get down to the nitty gritty of, you know, are you, especially to white people, uncomfortable conversations. Do you mm-hmm. get enough money on food stamps to be able to live? If food went mm-hmm. up 20%, food stamps didn't go up. And for those of you yeah. not in America, food stamps is a, is a deal that's been used against minority communities here for decades and decades and decades. Um, our government used to give out government subsidies during the winter to get people by. And they eventually did food stamps because the, you know, the grocery stores like it, they get money in, they get to rotate their stock and the big suppliers of food get money in. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's of little or no use anymore. It's just not that much money. Yeah. But in a small town, that's the only thing that keeps you there. So if you mm-hmm. cut that, do they all have to come to the city? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, we don't know what bothers people in small towns. So what we were thinking about is taking our podcast on the road and do town hall podcasts because we have nothing that, to lose. That would be an awesome experience as well. Right. Like, and go in and, and, and if they're yelling at us and shit, who cares? Mm hmm. Oh, you know, Sean, it'll be entertaining as hell. <laughs> you should do right. it. <laughs> so you and I have made it may have made a script that sounded an awful lot like that. <laughs> so, so on the show, I go, hey, look, if we're going to do this, we both have to jump out of an airplane and get mm-hmm. filmed going, I'm announcing that I'm running for it. <laughs> we'll just do every crazy ass thing there is and steal the media. And you don't Sean. have to steal regular media. <laughs> yes. Can I give you an idea? Instead of skydiving and doing that, you should go to that place in Oklahoma City where it has that Indo skydiving thing. <laughs> oh my God, that would be even ho- <laughs> like the trashy oh, version yeah. of skydiving to the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> but we could get way better footage and audio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus so you can have, have go again. We'd have plus to you can redo. <laughs> right. Yeah. God, good point. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you only want to redo so many times out of a real plane. Yeah, um, that's that's a great idea. So would we just overdub that whole thing and then just throw the fan mm-hmm. sound in the background? I mean, but it would be no one would have ever done anything like this. And we literally follow the script that you and I may know something about. Yeah, <laughs> you down for it? 
<laughs> oh, hell yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> Sean run so, for, who, who runs for governor? Who runs for lieutenant governor? So he wanted, to, funny he, as fuck. <laughs> he, he wanted to run for lieutenant governor and have me run for governor. I've got to mm-hmm. see I, what I need to do is I've got some licensing stuff I've got to do right now uh, because of my wife's illness. And, and I've got to mm-hmm. see how all of that goes. And then, I mean, I don't, the, the deal is, is you do what's called an exploratory committee. So what that means is you literally get 15 or 20 connected political people to go out and see, is there um, a want for this? Now, Mm -hmm. just because of what I do work-wise, I know there's a want for it, but do they want two old white guys? You know, because the Democratic Mm -hmm. Party doesn't really want two old white guys, which is fine. It's transitioning. But the Republican Party is so weird, I can't be part of that. And my (laughs) thought is there's got to be 20 to 30 percent of the population that feels like I do. And they're just tired of all this BS. You know, Mm -hmm. have you noticed I have not cussed yet? I know. I think I saw more. (laughs) I know. So um, give it some thought as we as we move forward on everything. It's, It's an interesting dynamic that I think is. If there is a future for our country between the Trump people and then the far, far left people, it's got to be just random people stepping up and running for stuff and shaking Mm -hmm. it up. And and what do you call that in your uh, in your business when somebody goes in and redoes a business from top to bottom? Is that uh, that restructuring? Or... No, no, I mean, there's, but there's an actual term for like the, the person who goes in and goes, I'm going to redo it this way, man. Uh, and I can't remember what it is, but plus I'm 60, so I don't care. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think we could do a motorcycle tour. We could do mm-hmm. a whole bunch of stuff. You need to just... hit the uh, biker bar that's by the red round barn right. or whatever on Route 66. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> well, and and the, the thing is, is neither one of us are afraid of any of that stuff. So mm-hmm. what you want to do is just change the tone. The tone we have right now is we have a billionaire governor who just does whatever the hell he pleases. He got into office, and I have nothing really against him. I, I Maybe I would behave the same way if I was him. You know, I mean, I, I don't know, but I'm not, so I don't have to worry about that. But he does whatever he wants, and everybody else seems to do kind of whatever they want under the guise of changing the way we do business as government. And you go, you know, you guys aren't new. We had kings and princes and shit that did all of this through history and that's why we killed all of them i mean literally yeah. that's why we killed them and uh and came to america and they had to you know unfortunately wipe this place out so we could start it all over again so yeah See, i think you two guys running would be awesome like speaking as an yeah. immigrant for the sole right. reason that we just want something to function normally and get shit done. Right. We don't really right. give a shit about all the fluff and how people's feelings are and all of that nonsense. Right. You know how immigrant people are, right? Really, it's like, yeah. yeah, let us just get our money, let us do our right. work, and let us get the fuck out. <laughs> and and here's, here's the interesting take on that. All of mm-hmm. the American ingenuity is from the exact visa that you came over on. Mm-hmm. And that visa has become incredibly incredibly difficult to do and we don't have some base to go to and troll from where we get mm-hmm. the best and brightest and you know you get somebody like you where they fuck o- they mess over your visa but you're back mm-hmm. in india so guess where the brilliant ideas are going india yeah. rather than here and we have always been able to literally poach all of those folks you know that it's, it's, shit. yeah Shut and that used to be, be fascinating for you to know right. that there were times where I used to go for my visa interview. This is like back in 2014, I think, where right. me and like a cardio surgeon was on the same visa for the same <laughs> interview. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, how the fuck am I competing in this? <laughs> Evidently, your scores were better than you ever tell anybody, is, is my guess. <laughs> you know, but but realistically, back to just the basics of business where you go, okay, we do not have a good education system here. That's fair. Everybody gets to make mm-hmm. that argument. And that's why we've drawn these folks from other countries. And people go, well, we used to have this great education system. And what I would say is, are you sure? Because up until World War I and II, where we got to pull the best and brightest from one of the world's best economies mm-hmm. and bring them all here, and most of them spoke Yiddish, 
yeah. and manufacturing went through the roof here. So I'm I'm not sure I'm buying what everybody's selling there, but I do think um, if there was a possibility of anybody, even statewide or federal wide, to draw some attention to what we're missing, because mm-hmm. you know they're just going to build it elsewhere. I mean, China's rolling along without us just fine. Oh yeah, did you see that they launched a battery that is kind of based on nuclear power that can last for five years? Like a little battery. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They're still carrying on this. in their own fucking mind, yeah. <laughs> trying to work to a technology in the future. <laughs> right. Well, you know, they base their economy on the American gasoline and oil economy and have found out that that doesn't, it, it's mm. not going to work long term. Um, I would also say Germany is, uh, BMW built a plane that's going to run on hydrogen. And that same mm-hmm. thing, that thing seems to be pretty viable, you know, obviously probably 10 years out or 15 years out, but you know, it's in the process. I mean, people are moving on while we're over here bickering about the same BS. It doesn't matter, you know, about somebody dumping a bunch of shit in the ground that messes up my house that I have to have insurance for. Oh God. But think about the pipe bursting, like my house in the village, (laughs) every winter I had to leave all the faucets dripping. (laughs) And right. my my bills would be out of whack just because of right. keeping the fucking pipes from not exploding. Yeah. <laughs> and for ten dollars worth of insulation, that could have been solved at the time, mm-hmm. and was not. And that that in lies the problem. So, and as climate change comes, this is just going to get worse because it used to be we kept the cold air up north because yeah. ours was strong enough down here, and that's just not the case anymore. So it slows down. That's yeah, nuts. Absolutely yeah. nuts. Think about the global warming thing, Sean. Like the other yeah. city I was in, which I was talking to you from. It was weird because yeah. I realized when I was talking to you that I'm like a stone's throw away from the Arabian Ocean. The last oh, time wow. I spoke to you a couple Jeez. of months ago, I was, I was, I think, on a beach in the Bay of Bengal. <laughs> oh, damn. I've spoken God, to you from why. three different ocean type things from the same country. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so since we're on the ocean part that you talked to from three different ones, what's the mm-hmm. difference between them? Because I, I was going to say, I've been in Atlantic, Pacific, Gulf of Mexico, and then all the ones surrounding Europe, which I can't even name the names at this point. I know. So <laughs> what, what, what do you see being different from one to the other? To be honest with you, the one that yeah. is the Bay of Bengal is probably dirtier because yeah. it's like an enclosed little cove with us on all one right. side, Thailand on the other side, and it's just yeah. a little pocket out there. Yeah. The cleanest well, one would probably be the Indian Ocean because that just opens up all the way from right. Sri Lanka. It's, it goes into like Singapore where that is and all of that. Yeah, right. that's probably the cleanest. The Arabian Ocean is yeah. pretty clean, but it's also bordered on one side by all the like the Middle Eastern countries where there's really right. <laughs> not much. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. God, that's crazy. Oh, what I was going to tell you was that they they are expecting a cold wave to come from northern India, which really? is, yeah, see, that's how much global uh, the climate has changed. Wow. Eh? Mm-hmm. Jesus. In, in your town or that town you were Not in? Not in my town, the other town. But then Northern wow. India is expected to go to like single digit temperatures in Celsius, which would be like the 30s, 30s mm-hmm. and early 40s, I guess. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. 32 degrees is zero, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I think yeah. I've got that right. Yeah. I, you know how Americans know about uh, uh, metric is if they buy weed or cocaine. <laughs> Are cheap bottles of wine, Sean. For some reason, it's written right. Seven fifty, <laughs> yeah, seven fifty mils. the The running joke with me is, I will watch like for for pub foods. You know, there's there's specific TikTok channels that'll they'll have Brits and they will do it in both. They'll be like, mm-hmm. yeah, two hundred grams of this. That's one cup. <laughs> but it's really not. It's slightly under. They, they're all just slightly off. But on that kind of food, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it, it's interesting how that works. I was trying to make my wife some um, authentic Italian food yesterday, which is not stuff you can sell in a restaurant because it's just not exciting enough. Mm-hmm. And so, you know how you roast Indian spices before you do stuff with them. The yep. Italian stole, stole one of your deals. So they, <laughs> they roast black pepper. And okay. so when I'm going through this, I'm like, this is when it matters where the black pepper comes from. 
That's mm-hmm. the only that is the time because it's the only flavoring for the dish. And then Pecorino Romano cheese. And you basically make a cream the cheese into a cream sauce by adding pasta water. I mean, it's it's okay. not complex. You could make it in a blender way easier. <laughs> but you know, the Italians like the drama. So uh-huh. um, but it was but it was delicious. And you do a little lemon zest at the end. I mean, it really is delicious. But I was like, that's when I would that's the dish I needed to be using when I was testing black pepper. Damn. Because you could did tell. James, right. Did James ever give you that pepper that I sent? Sh- yeah, but I haven't done anything with it and until yesterday. It hasn't meant anything because, you know, I was telling you, I don't know. I don't know if any Americans have enough of a palate to know the difference between good pepper mm-hmm. and mediocre or not. Good cinnamon, we can tell. Yeah. But good pepper, you know, it's just it's the only spice <laughs> we use generally is salt <laughs> and pepper. And uh, shouldn't you be well versed with its flavoring profile? <laughs> you would think, but you know, none of us bought good stuff. We're Americans don't spend money for quality food in general. That's why Walmart is the biggest grocery store chain here. Mm-hmm. It's bulk, yeah. it's cheap. You know, if we really cared, we'd still have neighborhood markets and all that kind of stuff. We just, it's just not mm-hmm. our. If you think back to when all of us arrived and started people and taken over their stuff, we were going to be out in the middle of nowhere for months and nobody to help us. So we still have that mentality of, I need 50 pounds of flour. I need 50 pounds of beans, you know, just enough to, to get me through the winter. Uh, yep. You know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, fascinating stuff. <laughs> so, huh. so what are you guys doing about climate change? I mean, what do you, is anybody doing anything? Cause you're, your leaders I, about like our old one. The, see, they are actually doing quite a li- at least a bit I've seen where all the right. um, public transport buses are now electric. Right. Nice. Yeah. So we went to natural gas because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess for us it's a pain in the ass even to get natural gas right. out of somewhere. <laughs> right. So it goes into like they are having those initiatives, but I do not understand what the hell is happening, especially after right. being in an airport as to how we are sustaining this much air tra- <laughs> air travel. Because <laughs> the emissions well, on that do not justify those ticket prices at all, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and you think about, so um, Dan Cunningham, our old friend, I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. saw the article on how much pollution comes off of the container ships that are built, oh, I believe yeah. it's by the Dutch, and that mm-hmm. that is more than all of the cars in America running all of the time. <laughs> and you go, so if we really just bought stuff from closer to home, mm-hmm. would solve a whole bunch of what's really polluting. And, you know, he mm-hmm. was he was real good about that. He was like, just tell me what you think is the real pollution item. You know, yeah. and and here it's it's abandoned oil wells and the oil yeah. and gas wells that are still leaking gas 24 seven. And they've been doing mm-hmm. it for tens of years, if not 100 <laughs> years at this point. I mean, that's that's legit. And we could pack them with um, essentially like mud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And keep that from happening, but uh, we don't want to spend the money on that. It's weird. <laughs> I know. Why not Very let weird. this be the next generation's problem? <laughs> you know, I know. It's how we roll here, buddy. It's how we roll. But, you know, I mean, you look at your country and as many people as you have, how do you get all of those folks to buy into anything? Yeah, you cannot get everybody on the same page, Sean. How do you even roll and figure right. out what the hell is going on? Like, think about it. When I, due to fog, there was a flight delay in, I think, right. Mumbai's airport. And the right. passengers refused to get on the flight and just sat on the tarmac. Get out, it was like seriously? A, yeah, but it, was, but it was like a 13-hour delay, so I don't know what oh, the fuck else God. anybody could have done. And, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, I don't know. It just, wow. The more I think of human beings, the more I realize it. Yeah, try not to solve most of this. <laughs> We're doomed. We're doomed. Well, and the and the average person is in the world. The average person is literally just trying to find something good to eat for the day. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. You know, it's it, they're See, not the ones making the decisions, killing all of us. Anthony Bourdain had that great quote where someone asked him about all the travels he had done. And he's like, what most people forget is that most of the places I go to, 
they just want a roof over their head, good food, yeah. able to take care yeah. of their loved ones. That's all it right. is <laughs> when it comes to basics. Unless you travel all these places, you don't have that external higher perspective. Not higher, but it's yeah. a broader perspective yeah. of... Right. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, my, my uncle was a uh, missionary down in Brazil. You know, mm -hmm. and whether you find Catholic missionaries to be good or bad is a whole nother, whole nother <laughs> show. Um, but his his deal was, it, it, look, it, none of these people care about politics. They're just worried about what they're going to eat tomorrow. Mm -hmm. well, you know, yeah. so I, I grew up hearing that, in, you know, literally it was a never ending anthem at any family gathering. <laughs> and he wasn't a downer about it. But, you know, my family's always been involved in politics, so they like to talk about it. And he would go. And none of that matters. Any any of the people making any decisions don't take any of these people into account. He goes, you know, if I get a phone call asking my opinion, you know, mm -hmm. great, but but that rarely happens. So yeah, he just had a whole different whole different take on it. And he was pretty he had to go with the flow, much like you know, you look you look at poverty in some countries and you get go, oh, there there will always be poor. Mm -hmm. Now yep. can we make their life more tolerable? Yes, but there will always be poor folks. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yesterday, I was watching an Instagram some video about this guy telling a story about. I think it's a story about an American businessman who goes to Mexico and meets a Mexican fisherman, and he asks right. the fisherman, "What do you do?" And he's like, "Nothing. I just catch fish and bring it back, and we cook right. it for our family, and we enjoy the day." Yep. He's like, "Oh, right. you should actually catch more fish so that you can take the surplus and go to the market." That way you can sell it and make extra money. And he's like, why right. would I do that? He's like, yeah. so that you can hire more employees who are your friends and give them money to catch more fish and go back to the market and goes on where he's like, now you need to build a factory where you make cans of this, where you can export it back to America. And it ends up to the point where he's like, then you can sell this corporate, this company that you've built, which cans fish to another person. And he's like, why would I do that? And he's like, so that you can catch fish, go enjoy it with your family. <laughs> Which right. was where he was all crazy? the time. <laughs> right. The perfect circle of the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, my goal on all of that, I read this book back in my 20s called The Life, Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. And this guy's mm -hmm. whole goal was to have one key at the end of his life, just for a key to a room or an apartment or something like that. And I was like, that is my mm -hmm. goal, not to own any... Unlike most people I know that want to own more and more and more and more, I want to own less and less and less and less, mm -hmm. especially at 60, because I'm in the final quarter. You know, however much time I got left, I don't know. But I don't want to be, I don't want a lake house that I have to go fix stuff <laughs> instead of relaxing. I just don't. Yeah. And, for, and for one, who am I impressing? Like, nobody cares what I have, and I don't care what they have. I mean, when it's all said mm. and done. But I, but I used to be a young man, and that mattered to me back then. <laughs> so you, you should, like, you will get along with my partners here who run the, who manage the software engineers, right? Because right. they're all in their 40s, and they're all minimalists. Right. Like, they right. just have, like, yeah. one house, one car, and they just yeah. mind their own business. Like, 7.30, right. like, 7.30 when they get out of work, they have, like, 45 mm -hmm. minutes to, like, chill with me, and then they're back right. home. That's about yeah. it like throughout the yeah. week that's their routine whereas it's all the kids who are like in their 20s who we have hired out of college who i'll see late night running around and they're oh, like yeah. what are you doing out and i'm like dude i'm still on call <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i have to work 24 hours literally i'm not kidding that's awesome hey man it's it's an it's a i didn't i'm, I'm trying to think you know i was like i was lucky i made a lot of money when i was young so i got mm -hmm. to do that already and then I had a lot of money in my in my 30s and I got to do that already. And so now I see the pointlessness of it all. But the only mm -hmm. people that say money doesn't matter are people that have money. So <laughs> let's call them what they are, dicks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, you, you sit there and go, well, it doesn't matter unless you don't have any. Then it really, really, really matters. You know, so mm -hmm. I, I don't I, I don't claim to be the master on any of that stuff. All right. Well, I got bread coming out. I'm going up to Kansas City for a funeral. I had a friend of mine get early onset Alzheimer's about mm -hmm. eight years ago. And it's just been a slow moving yeah. point. To, yeah. Awful. And she was beautiful. 
had the greenest light, light green eyes I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> just gorgeous. Yeah. I never oh, dated damn. her. Just, just to point that out in case anybody I, I know is listening. Anybody this, gets just, ideas and knock it off. Just friends, Sean is just very innocently yeah. commenting on her eyes. <laughs> right. Well, I had, I had some lady in the restaurant like two or three weeks ago came up to talk to me about some political activism that I do. And, mm -hmm. and her husband was there and I looked at him and I go, how do you argue with her? And he goes, what? And I go, God, her eyes are so beautiful. How do you, you know, like when she's mad at you and you're arguing, how do you? He goes, I just look away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the easiest thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I just look away. That works. All right, homie. Well, I'm going to get out of here so I can get my stuff done. I still got to do my store yeah. runs and everything. This is the Villagers okay. podcast. Thank you so much.